My name is Kari Jensen, an Adobe Certified Instructor for a number of Adobe applications, and I'm now speaking in stereo, and I'm also an Adobe Community Professional. That basically means I'm amongst a team of volunteers that help answer questions in the Adobe forums. So I'm going to just dive straight into this. So let's get started. We're here today to talk about how we can use CC libraries in our workflows, so we can either add items to them, we can use them, we can organize them, and we can share them. That's kind of the gist of the whole idea behind CC libraries. Funny enough, if you see some of the documentation about it, I always find that the, the word use is missing from um, talking about CC libraries. It's all about adding, organizing, and sharing. But really, who uses CC libraries already in the room? Just a quick idea that's, who's accidentally used them without realizing they might be using them? <laughs> Okay, it happens. So the idea behind the CC libraries is basically that from a number of mobile and desktop applications, you can add your design elements and your design assets, ranging from colors to partially finished design elements to smart objects that you might create in Photoshop to videos even and animations. You can push those into a library. And even if you're not connected to the internet, these are shared kind of locally on your computer. They're in a mysterious place. Um, don't quite know where they are, but it just seems to work. And then if you open certain other Adobe applications, you'll start to see these libraries popping up, and you'll be able to use elements that are added to those libraries. So you might have got a color scheme that you have as part of a brand that you've created, and you want to build more designs for that particular brand, be it a web design, or you might do animations or web banners you tend to always go to the same colors, to the same logo database. That might currently just be a folder on your server, but consider maybe looking at using libraries for that. Now, you can have an unlimited amount of libraries. And you can add up to, or including, I never know whether it's 999 or 1,000 items in an element. But I'm thinking that if you reach that limit, one more or less might not be that big a deal. You might create another library for that. And eventually, the, the share idea behind libraries is twofold. You can either share or you can collaborate with libraries. I will elaborate on that during the session when I actually show a demo of that. So when we look at adding, you can literally add from capture. Now, if you've attended Teresa's session, you would have started with a capture of the pattern this morning, and that was then used in some other projects. Um, in that case, it was used in Adobe Draw, and it was also used at some point in Illustrator. But you can see just about every creative application for desktop is there. So you can add all sorts of design elements into your library. You can also do this from Adobe Stock. So if you're working on a design and you're still not sure about the graphics and the images that you're using, or even the logos or the icons, go and have a look in Adobe Stock, and you can temporarily download the, the preview version into your library and eventually you can license that if your client says, well, I'm OK with that image that you've used. License it, and then it becomes part of your design. Not just stock, you can also add icons and design elements that you might find in Marketplace, which you'll find if you go to your Creative Cloud desktop app. There's a little files, uh, what's the other one? There's assets, can't remember what it's called, but you'll find it there. There's Marketplace there. So you can do that as well. <coughs> now, once you've added them, you can use those components, be it colors, in a range of applications. Not just desktop, but also in a lot of your mobile apps that you've got available. For instance, uh, Teresa showed an example where she added something in Capture, and then it was used in Adobe Draw in her session to further create uh, a creation. Eventually, that was pushed out to Illustrator. So obviously, the two applications from which you can't use components other ones that are basically a source for creating things, which is Adobe Capture and Stock. And the type of elements that you can put in a library is actually quite a few different types of elements. For instance, you can add animations into uh, a library. Now you might think, animation, what would I use to create that? Adobe Animate. Good, so I'll add an animation. Does that mean I can only use it in Animate? No, you can, for instance, pull that animation into Adobe Muse and use it right there. You can also bring symbols in, and that's handy if you're like a, if you're an animator, 
you might have symbols that you reuse. So I'll bring them into a library and then within your different animate projects you can start using them. Illustrator and Photoshop users in the room? Brushes. You have vector-based brushes, pixel-based brushes. You can create them in Capture. You can create them in Illustrator, Photoshop. Vector, obviously, for the Illustrator type, vector-based programs, and Pixel for the Photoshop application. You can also use the brushes in Animate as well. <coughs> Another asset is your CMYK your RGB colors. I know that if you hop online and you read up on the use of colors as a library asset, it will say in the write-up you can't do spot. If I have time at the end, I'll show you a workaround on how to get spot colors into your library, because it does work, but you need to create them in Illustrator. I've tested it, and I don't want to do it as part of my demo, just in case you stuff up. <laughs> color themes. You have inspirations for colors everywhere. You might be designing a brand, and you want to get some color themes around coffee. Now, someone's going to come and give me coffee at 3 o'clock, because I've been <laughs> off coffee today, because I already have the tendency to talk really fast. So um, I've had to just calm myself down. Um, but you can capture colour themes with your phone. We'll, we'll actually do that. I'll do that as part of the session. And you can also capture them in InDesign as well with the colour theme tool if there's any InDesign users in the room. And then you can pick colours from the colour theme and use them in your various applications. Graphics. The graphics part is probably the biggest pool for the use of libraries because you know, who doesn't use logos, for instance? Where do you find your logos? Where do you use your logos? You use them in every type of design that you do. Wouldn't it be cool if they're all sitting in a library? You know, your, your reversed out logo, your spot color logo, your CMYK color logo, your web version of your logo. And it doesn't matter what project you're working on. If you want to have access to them, the libraries are right there in your application. And you just pull them, bring them into your design. And these are things that generally don't change once they're locked in, so you don't have to be too concerned for breaking links for brand assets that are kind of locked down. Obviously, when logos change, things will change. There's even INDD there, so you can pull InDesign partials uh, and design components into your library. Think of using that, for instance, if you're doing magazine layouts, magazine designs, you might have a particular um, half-page article layouts that you use. Think about putting like empty shelves or empty containers in there with threaded text frames and everything. All you need to do is drag that to your page and put the text in it and format that. Layer styles, when well, you're using Photoshop, we've probably all used layer styles. If you've used a drop shadow, don't say anything. No. <laughs> you can store the settings in a layer style that you can reuse in other projects. And then there's looks. Looks is something that you can not only use in video to, get, to create these cinematic type effects on, on, on movies where you just drag and drop a look on it and it's a bit like a color theme but it, you apply it to your video. You can actually also apply them in Photoshop as well using, I think it's a color lookup table at the top of my head. Uh, if you've done graphic design then you probably would have worked with type and text. So character paragraph styles. I could give a whole hour session on why I like using styles, but uh, apparently I have a little OCD when it comes to styles. So people recognize documents that I've touched because there's lots of styles in there. Video can go in. Now you can even put video in from Adobe Stock, which is good in a way because if you're not a video person, but yet you need to do something with video, uh, let's say in this case we're doing something for, for a coffee place, you just want to see the coffee machine uh, going as part of a little video that you do. You don't quite know whether your customer approves of that video. Then you can again have a preview of that video, pull that into Premiere Pro, and then once the customer's happy with it, you can always license it. You can put your logo over the top of it. You can then also put your looks over the top of it. All right, so that's a little bit of everything that goes into the libraries. I want to really get through these last three slides and actually show you a, a demo, like a, a full workflow. You can organize your, library, your, your content in lots of different libraries. So one of the things that you'll see me do today is 
put some design components, design ideas into a library, use it as the basis to start building a brand, and then put the brand identity elements into a separate library that I can then share and collaborate with and get other designers to use elements from that to start building designs. You can also build libraries for items that you want to share publicly. For instance, if you are you're a graphic designer in your own organization, then one of the things that you might need to do is share your logos. And you can get people to download them, but if you share logos with graphic designers, I think you've got about 99.9% .9 chance that they're using Adobe Creative Cloud software. So if you share a library with them, they have they always have the latest version of your logos or any digital or creative assets that are part of your brand that you want to share with the wide world. There might be internal stuff that you go, well, hang on, we'll keep that just for us. We don't want, them to, we don't want to give everything away. Now, you can organize your libraries both in the, in the web interface or also straight from the libraries or the CC libraries panels in the various applications. Because certain <coughs> programs already have a libraries panel, like Animate already has a libraries panel, InDesign already has a libraries panel, Muse already has a libraries panel. In those types of applications, the, the name of the Creative Cloud libraries panel actually is prefixed with the letters CC. So there, you might come across a few libraries um, where you go, oh, hang on, wrong one, I need to do the other one. And then there's obviously already mentioned that you can share and collaborate. I will cover this in the session because I want to get started with you guys. Now before I do that, just a quick run through of the idea that I have in my head and I'll, I will literally go through the steps here. So I'm going to start out with my mobile phone and capture a design idea. I had a little panic last night because I left this in the room. So I grabbed a little notepad in the hotel room and I kind of traced the logo idea again. But it really, I could have lost this forever and still have the other piece of paper because who does not design by just sketching on a piece of paper that lays um, in front of you. You know, you do a little, you've got a job to do and you know, you're sitting in a restaurant and you know you, the next day you still need to work on this design. Start sketching. You can bring those, it, the, the idea, capture that in Adobe Capture. We're going to then push that into a library and I'm going to pull that core element out of the library and turn it into a logo. We're then going to grab an idea for the base colors for this brand from a photo. And again, in Illustrator, we'll jump into and sort of kind of get our corporate colors locked down. Now, I'm doing this in a really fast forward uh, movement, so I have files that are already partially done and, and stuff like that. And then we'll jump into InDesign, and I'll build a, a brand guide. It's a very primitive one, but we'll look at, you know, bringing the logos in. Uh, from the library, and then you know, maybe adding some secondary colors on top of the primary colors, building some of the core styles, because part of your brand identity is also locking down the fonts that are used for headings and, and body copy. So all of, all of that information can, can not only go in your visual brand guide, but it can also go into a CC library. Then I'll actually share that library at some point with the Windows user on this Mac, which is a good thing, so that's just, I don't want to upset any Windows users in the room, so make sure that we put a little bit of Windows in. And we'll integrate stock and InDesign to build a fictional ad. Take it from there. Then we'll build a web banner in Photoshop, also integrating and using elements from the library, but also building a new library from the Photoshop file. And then the last two things that I'll show you is like how you can bring an animation in from Animate, bring that into Muse, and also bring design elements into Muse. Any Muse users in the room? Yay, I love Muse. All right, so let me hit the hidden escape key on my keyboard. And so we're gonna start by toggling to my phone. And I'm gonna start with a little application called Capture. So I'm launching it. Now, I, I have not the best eyesight, and I find it really difficult that when I start to tap on the five different things that you can do in Capture, that at some point I can't actually read the text anymore. So what I normally do when I use Capture, I long press on the plus, and that will give me access to one of the five types of things that I can capture. I'll just close out of that, because I forgot to do one thing. Uh, the first thing that I'll do at the very top of the Capture screen, there is an option to pre-select a library in which you want to push your captured design elements or colors. 
Now, I could create a library after I've captured, but I thought, why not do it in advance? So there's a number of libraries in here. I'm going to click on the plus and call this my edge design. So that's kind of, I'm still in an idea mode. I'm going to just put whatever I, all my little sketches I'm going to put in there. And now make sure that I tap on that so that's actually currently the selected library at the top of the screen. Then long press the plus. And the first thing that I want to do is capture a shape, which is that little logo that I've created. I'll zoom in a bit. And you can control kind of the, the black and white input by grabbing this slider at the bottom. And you can see that's actually hand sketched. I did the outline and then I colored it in. And let's do that. I'm trying to hold my hand really still. I'm shaking. No. Oh. I'll just tap that. Tap the big green button. So I've now captured it. I can erase anything that I didn't want to capture by tapping on the erase button at the bottom and just erasing that. And I can also crop it down, which kind of defeats the purpose of erasing that, but I wanted to show you that you could erase bits and pieces. There we go. And then tap the next button in the top right corner. So this looks pretty yucky at this stage. And normally, you know, if I bring this into Illustrator, I do a lot more work on it, obviously, to fine-tune it. But for this session, I'll just tap on the smooth button at the bottom, and I'm going, that's good enough. Once it's in Illustrator, I kind of like those little white elements in it. I might just remove those little black spots that are sitting here and there. So I click on Next, and let's name it. So, logo, I don't know, idea, base, whatever you want to call it. And I like the fact that I've already selected a library here because right now I have this save shape button in my face. I can't actually see what library I'm saving this into unless I scroll this up because I'm on a phone. So I'm just going to hit save shape. So that's a shape done. That's a library created, a shape's moved in, and it's going to be the basis for the design. So let's long press once more. And I'm going to jump into colors. And I love my color. As most of my Facebook friends know, I actually have a coffee album on Facebook. I'll just tap on my camera roll here and go to my Make It session. I do take photos of coffee as well. I like doing that. And I'll, I'll use that. I can't help it. You know, I'm having withdrawal <laughs> symptoms right now. And, um, but Claire from Adobe, she's promised me she's going to bring a coffee. So what it's li let, literally doing, it's picking some beautiful colors from this image. I could grab the little color markers and move them around, but I'm quite happy with that. So I'll leave it where it was. And I'm just going to click on the big white button and opt to generate CMYK colors. I could still go into these colors and make some changes to it, but I might actually do that once I start using those colors when I'm working on my logo in <coughs> Illustrator. So I'm going to hit next. I'm going to call this the what do you reckon we should call it? Coffee theme? <laughs> and because I already pre-selected that library, it goes into that edge design library as well. So I'll save that. And I'll also show you that I've made this discoverable. That means anyone who has access to color.adobe.com can actually find this theme now. So if you have a coffee brand to do some designs for, feel free to use my theme as the basis. Mm -hmm. I'll save that. It's there. And then just one last thing, just want to show you that you can actually use a photo as well to create a look. If we do have time all the way at the end, like extra time, I might quickly show you how you could also apply that look either in Photoshop or in Premiere. So I'll go back to the camera roll. Would be nice if it had like last photo used, maybe next. And then click on that. Always go for the big button. If there's nothing else on the screen in those apps, just go for the big button. You can kind of control um, how much of that color look you want to apply. I'm happy with that. Click Next, and I'm going to call that. I do apologize to any non-coffee drinkers, by the way, for pushing the coffee here. I'm sure if there's a coffee stall out the corner, it'll do good business. So that's really done in Capture. I'm out of it. Done. Don't need to go back there again. So I could confidently... I'll let I'll it run just in case I want to go back. So what I want to do now is jump into Illustrator and start working 
on a base design. Now, here's my libraries panel in Illustrator. Let's see that edge design library is there already. Fantastic. And those are the three elements that you can basically start using as your design phase. Now, we'll notice that the looks is grayed out because I can't use this looks asset in this particular application. So you can always tell if you put something in a library that you can't look use in another program by the fact that it's grayed out that you can't use it. So I'm going to start by dragging in that logo ID. Notice it's been captured as an SVG file. Bring that in, resize it. So we're now working our way in Illustrator. And I might just, I'm not going to perfect it because I'll just double click that. That gets you into isolation mode in Illustrator. I'll just get rid of some of these little bits and pieces here. So we're just making some adjustments here. And maybe just move that to the left a bit. Yeah, it looks better, doesn't it? Or maybe a bit back to the right. Okay, I'll do it. Hang on. No, no, no. That's, that's exactly as it should be. I'm happy with that. <laughs> All right. So we'll come to the use of colors. Now, I've purposely launched the swatches panel already. You can see there's no colors in here. So what I'm going to do is right click on the color theme and add those to the swatches. And they, they're just added as a theme or a swatch group in Illustrator. Let me double click on some of these elements and start using some of these colors. Oh, that one there. Oops. Oops, I said it again. I'm like double clicking my way through this. I could just do the select thing of ungrouping them so I can easily select these elements, but I'm not going to. Can't be bothered. Uh, let's go maybe yellow, let's go maybe orange. I'm happy with that. Now I'm just going to display my swatches like this. They are CMYK colours, uh, but I'm not quite happy with the naming of those colours. So what I'll do is I'm actually going to rename them very quickly. i call this match brown. Oh, hey, isn't that cool? Look at that. I can add that to the library if I want to. But the problem is I don't actually want to add it to this library. I want to create a new library that is going to be part of my brand. So this is going to be my brand edge brown color. So I'm going to create a brand new library. Let me close this. No. Actually, I'll do, the, I'll do it another way. Sorry. Uh, no, I'll leave it as this. That's OK. Uh, click OK. because now it's called my library. And if anyone has accidentally used libraries, then you will have a lot of my libraries. You might have my library one, my library two. So just for, just for good practice, let me rename it. This is kind of a blooper, because in my prep, I was going to just create the library first. But this is where you improvise. Let's go and call it Edge Brand. Rename. OK, so I can do the same with other colors. But the other thing that you can do if you isolate an element, there's a little plus at the bottom of the library. Now it's actually named in the Illustrator file as well. Um, there's also this orange color here. If I want to click that plus, I can actually add that little swirl if I wanted to. I don't want to do that. I just want to add the fill color. And then I can, again, rename that and call that edge. Orange. I have to use orange in all designs because I'm from Holland originally. <laughs> okay. And there's the yellow color. And let's see if I can just drag and drop that in. Oh, that doesn't work. Would that be nice if you could just drag and drop it in from your swatches? Thankfully, there's a little add it to the currently selected library button at the bottom of your swatches panel. And you'll see this little button in more panel, more panels in more Adobe applications. Okay? So I'm going to click that. Now if I had named that already, then I wouldn't have to go through the process of now naming this as yellow. All right. I'm kind of happy with that. That's my color logo done. So let's drag that logo into the library. Now it's no longer a logo idea, it's actually logo color. Then we'll obviously need to have a black version. Come on. Select it all, click on black, and drag in. I'll just do that quickly. 
my mouse is sliding off the desk, so I will do that. Logo black. Don't fall asleep on me, please, whilst I'm doing this. Uh, and you know, we need to have a reverse house ver art version as well, don't we? And I can also add it like that. In this case, I want to add the graphic. I could add the white fill color as well at the same time. If your elements are all the same fill color, then you can add both the graphic and the color at the same time, which can be handy. Um, but because I kind of dissected this logo, I'll just do the graphic here. Logo. And at this stage, that's kind of the, the brand has been created. Yes, and it's yellow minus a W. That's a very special yellow. Uh, and we're just going to leave it like that because we can. And I could really just close this file now. Uh, and this is assuming that obviously there's part of your workflow where you go, your logo goes for approval. I'll show a couple of ways in which you can also use CC libraries to do that as well. But rather than doing that all at once, let's assume this logo is now approved. And we're going to jump into InDesign. So we've gone through step one. We've gone through step two. We've got our color sorted. We've got our logo sorted. Let's now start looking at that brand guide. So the first thing I want to do is pull some items out of my library. OK, let's find it. So in <laughs> InDesign, it's the CC libraries panel. And there is the Edge brand library. And there's my colors. And here is my logos. So I could do a bunch of things with logos. I could drag and drop them onto placeholders that I've created earlier. And then with the frame fitting option set, it all drops in nicely. Now, what happens when you drag and drop a graphic from a library? What happens when you place a graphic into InDesign? It builds a link out to where the original asset is. And you'll see this little link badge appear on your graphic. That is, if you're a designer who <laughs> works in normal screen mode rather than preview mode, because otherwise you won't see them. And if it's an asset that originates from a library, you get a little cloud there. And also in your links panel, you will see there's a little cloud icon there. <coughs> so if you get missing or modified links for links that originate from the cloud, you will still get the same little yellow triangles and red stop signs but just over the top of that little cloud icon. So you don't need to relink and find them in your library. Hopefully I'll show you that. Okay. Um, so you automatically create a link. The other thing that you can do, if you right click on a graphic that you bring in, you have the option to detach from the library. You say, I want this to embed into my InDesign file. I don't want to have anything to do with that library anymore because what happens if someone changes my logo? I'd get really angry if someone changes my logo without my permission, to be honest. But if it's another type of asset, then you might want to break that link and purposely you know, make some changes yourself. I will place it as a link again, because I can. But I just wanted to show you that you can place it as a copy as well. And we'll do that for the white one as well. Place link. And because I pre-selected containers, it's all a little bit easier. OK. so. I was like in the busy, I'm, I'm in the process of doing this brand guide and I thought the logo had been approved. The customer comes back and says, you know, three colors in that logo, I don't like it. And go, ah, oh, I already built my brand library. What do I do? Well, you can actually either right click and edit graphics in your library or you can just double click them. And it will know that I did this in Illustrator. So I go back into Illustrator. And I'll go, OK, so that one needs to be yellow. Yes, we'll make that yellow. Done. Your file has a really cool name. So whenever you see these really cool names, like logo, blah, blah, OCB, 1F, whatever, that's kind of a giveaway that it's coming out of a library. Don't touch, don't reset, rename, don't save as. Just finish what you're doing, save it, close it. and. It's updated not only in the library, but also in your InDesign file. So if you have an application open and you're using assets in that application, you start editing those assets in the library, it actually updates automatically. <coughs> Obviously, it might be a little bit different if you close your InDesign document and then open it. Then you'll get missing and modified items. All right. Let's jump into the color. So I'll have to, you know, for the, for the sake of put these colors in. And like I said, this is like a very simple, simplified kind of guide. If I wanted to bring this dark blue in, 
I could do the exact same. Want to bring my secondary colors in, add the fill color for the selected object. I don't want to bring the, the rectangle itself in or the square. Click add and we'll call this, we'll call it blue dark. Hmm. What's another way in which you create colors in InDesign? You go to your swatches panel, you go new color swatch. And I am convinced that any InDesign user might have come across this. I, I certainly have. Uh, it happens to me so often that I add colors to my swatches and I go, oh, I forgot to either untick the add to CC library box in the lower left hand corner. And they just, because they, they are automatically added into your currently selected libraries folder. So if you want to add them automatically, make sure you select the li right library. If you're still in a design process and you're not quite ready with your colors, uncheck that add to CC, li CC library option. You can always add your colors later on from your swatches panel as well. And we'll call this. Ooh, I like the sound of my hands typing on the keyboard. I'm weird. Hmm. Let's click Add. It's added to the document as well. Click Done. And it's added to the library too. Now, for completeness, I'm not going to put everything in the library right now, but we'll put a couple of paragraph styles in as well. Now, if I had a color here, you've got that same little cloud icon. When it comes to paragraph styles, I already have uh, heading one style in my paragraph styles. I'm happy with that. That uses the font that I want, the, want to be part of the brand. So why not just click that button once again at the bottom of your styles panel and it will automatically add that style into the document. Adding a body, copy style, we can do something similar, create a new paragraph style and then you see that same add to CC libraries checkbox. It's already pointing to the edge brand We'll name it body copy. And I could do one for heading two as well. We'll do that. Uh, you don't necessarily have to select your text, by the way. You can just do this and click the plus and add a paragraph style on the fly. So I haven't actually defined a paragraph style in InDesign at all in this case. So we'll just take all the formatting and then I'll have to make sure that I name it in here. Oops, hang on. Ah. Done. All right, I'm happy with that. I can also do some character styles if I wanted to. So if I wanted to, for instance, capture a bold brown text, and I'm not even going to create a character style, I'm going to do that. Take that off, and that will add bold brown. Oop. I'm so quick I can't see myself typing and then it just feels. All right, so I can do that with more character styles if I wanted to. I won't do that for, because obviously we're in, a, we're in a demo and hopefully you'll get the idea of how you can pull design elements in. And the idea behind this particular library is that what I want to do here is build something that I can use internally within my design studio. Edge Coffee might be one of our clients. And as a team, we want to build more design components. You might have marketing flyers, brochures, postcards, websites, animations, web banners, a lot of other type of designs that you do for this particular brand. So right now I am the owner. I own a brand. No, it's just a library. I can do a couple of things. First of all, I can let me just rewind a little bit. So I can share what's in this library. And I've already given, given you kind of a scenario but where you would use this internally. But let's assume that I might also work with external designers that don't work for my organization. And I, I don't want to want to collaborate with them. The difference between sharing and collaboration is when you start to collaborate, you can lock down who has access to the library. And then you have two different things you can do. You can either collaborate and allow people to also make changes to the content in the library, add things to it. Or you can say, yeah, I'm collaborating with you. 
but you can just use it as a library. You can pull things out of it, but it always remains synchronized with your system. If we make changes to it, those changes will be reflected on your system. You can select who that's shared with. When you share, this is, this is confusing. I'm talking about sharing and sharing, and it's like they're sharing one way and sharing another way. When you use the share link feature, what you actually do, and I'm gonna do it, I'll just click on share link. You're generated, generating a public link to your library. That means that anyone with that link will have access to your library. So I'm just, just cranking this up for a bit. This is like almost as fast as the internet in Western Australia is right now. And you'll see that right now, the Edge Brand Library is it's just, it's mine, it's private. So when I, when I share it, I have to make it public. It's the only way I can share it. But I have some options where I share it. I'll, whilst I'm here, I'll copy this link. If people don't have Creative Cloud access, all they can do is see the components and maybe download a portable network graphic. I'm just looking at Therese in the back of the room. She can fair. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, cool. Yeah. You can download. You can download. Yeah. If I enable the allow to follow, then any external graphic designer in your team or any designer in your team or anyone with the link and Creative Cloud access will be able to follow your library, see it in their library's panel, and then when you make changes in that library, that will be reflected and updated in the library that they're following. You can also unfollow a library again. If you go, well, I'm done with that client, don't want to ever do a job for them again, that happens sometimes, then you would unfollow and you might go and follow some other brand libraries. But just be aware that anyone that has that link can do this if you enable this setting. The other thing is that you can do is that you can only allow people to save the library. That means they kind of, you know, they have, that's the library that I own. They kind of take a copy of that that goes into their library's panel. They can do then, they can do whatever they want with it at that stage. It has no link to whatever you've done. So if you want to stay in control, then just put an allow follow only. They won't be able to put anything in it. They can just see the updated version of your library and your assets that you're sharing. Okay, I'll do that. I'll click on the save button and I'll jump into mental blank. It will come back to me. I will jump into Firefox. See, came back. I've had lunch too. So. And I'll just paste in that link. And if I've done it right, I have not signed in with a Creative Cloud account. So I can kind of show you what happens here. So I can literally have access to all of those libraries. Uh, I've not signed in. You can see that at the top right corner. If I want to follow this, it will actually tell me, hello, you want to follow this? Sign up for Creative Cloud, get your Adobe ID all sorted, and then you can follow it. But in this case, I won't do that, just to show you that how this particular part of it works. You might do this if you're still working on those logo designs and you might want customers to see stuff already. It's a way of kind of previewing things. So think of bringing that part into your workflow using CC libraries. I'm going to close that. I still have that link copied, and because I can, don't, 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 you know, it's all okay. We're going to jump to Windows now. And I'll launch whatever this web browser is on Windows. I'm always a Mac user. <laughs> oh, look, we get to see. It's 70 degrees in Amsterdam. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm pushing that link in. Now, hopefully, in, in this case, I've actually signed in, if I've done it correct. I've signed in. Um, I, I have two different Creative Cloud accounts. So this is the Kari without a face, so an anonymous version, and the one that I'm using on my Mac actually has my picture on it. So that's how you can tell the difference. I want to follow this so I can show you what that looks like. Minimize this, try and see that I minimize the right thing. So you can, oh, hang on, still going. Or if you, I, I know, you might have, did you blink? The internet here is so fast. It's like, 
I can't walk and run because then I lose audio, but in the lower right-hand corner, next to the trash can icon, there was a little twirly thing happening whilst it was sinking. But it went, like if I was in Perth, I'd go, I'd go and make a coffee and come back. <laughs> um, but here it is. So this is my Edgebrand library. I have access to all of those assets. If I look at the bottom, there's a big fat padlock on it. Can't do anything else but pull stuff out of it. Public link available for anyone. I am going to <coughs> unfollow that. Just so that I can show you that I've unfollowed. Thanks. So that is a public link available for everyone. So now let's look at the collaboration side of things. So I'm going back to, we'll go back to the Mac site now, but I will come back to the Windows site. Okay, so I have this Edge Brent library. If I want to lock down the management and control of that library to one person in charge of the brand assets, then what I would do is I would share that without the ability to edit it. I'm a bit of a control freak, so that's what I'm going to do. That's a bad thing to say, isn't it? I'll go to collaborate, because now I want to control who has access to it. Come on, it's fast. You just told me. Super fast. And I apologise to the government of Western Australia for talking bad about our internet. OK, so I'm the owner, me with the picture. So here I can control whether someone can edit or just view. Now just to show you the difference between the two, I'm going to do one library with edit and one library with view. So this one I'm going to do view only. And I'm going to share that with myself, my other self. So that's like, I need to talk like that. And invite. So that's basically going back to the same PC. And then I'll show you another library that I've got. Ooh, something's beeping. In the brand library, I have started working on this coffee brand. And so I've got this library already created where I've downloaded quite a bit of stuff from Adobe Stock. And really, these are image resources that I have. Some of them are licensed, some of them are not yet licensed, because you can just download previews as well. If I right click on it, it will tell you whether it's licensed or not. So you can see I can, I can use it. But if I want to use it in production, eventually I'll have to license the image. But think of that as a stock library that you've licensed for this particular client. Because once you download an image from stock and you license, license an image from stock, you license that for that particular client. So you can use that image not just in InDesign, but in Illustrator, on the website, in Animate. So it's something that you might want to think of sharing with the rest of the team as part of the brand. So have a separate library, organize it, all, the, all the stock art. You can almost call it stock art. Well, hey, it's called stock. It's art. Stock art. They're all JPEGs, but we'll look at some of the things that work, workflows around that as well. And that would mean that if other people are building designs for this brand, you might want to look for another type of coffee image to use in a design. Go to stock, license it, add it to this library so that everyone in your team can use it. So this one I will actually share with edit. And again, just pulling this up. Do a little stretch whilst you're doing this because you guys are falling asleep. And same person. And I, because I forgot to mention it at the beginning, I will have, or I might, maybe I did, but I've already forgotten. <laughs> uh, we will do some questions at the end as well, obviously. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Come on, guys, wake up. I'm sort of, <laughs> help me. I was going to edit this one. Invite. So, good stuff. So, oh, I don't know what those beeps are. What do you reckon those beeps are? Somewhere there's alerts going off on my <laughs> other system telling me that I've got an invite of sort. I'm going to go, sorry guys, just jumping back to here. I'm going, okay, so I've shared a library collaboratively. One can view, one can edit. So what you kind of expect is that you can see them right here in the library panel. But it's not actually the case. Those little beeps that you were hearing in the background, uh, if I had my email application running, there's probably an email in my inbox. But we also have, both on Mac and Windows, access to our Creative Cloud desktop application. So in the Mac, it's normally in the toolbar in the 
PC, it's in your taskbar. So let's click on that. Oh, look, I've got two invites, party time. Let's have a look. Why do I say that? There they go, two invites. Let's have a look at what they are. I'm invited to collaborate. Ooh, that means I can add things to it and delete things from it. So think about it if you don't want people to delete things. Do you want them to collaborate? I'll accept that one. And the library brand, accept that one as well. All right. Now I'm going to cheat a little here because we do bake things. We kind of pre-bake things. Okay, hang on, make sure that you see. Oh, let us see. Lower right hand corner. It's doing its business. Oh, oh, Edge brand has arrived. I should really, what I'm going to do very quickly, I do apologise, I'm going to share one that I've baked earlier that has got a few more elements in it. So I'll do the same thing. It's all good. Because you need it to stretch and do stuff anyway. Have a drink. Ooh, is that coffee? <laughs> Um, that was view only, so we'll do the same thing. Sorry about that. That does happen. Doesn't matter how many times you rehearse, you do stuff up at times. Another invite. Oh, look at this. Show me the invite. Let's accept that one. Because what I'll use, I'll use that library as a starting point. Come on, you can do it. Oh, this is quick. No, not there. Come on. I accept the right one. I named it the same, but one of them has a hyphen, one of them doesn't. Uh, when in doubt, we'll just use whatever we've got. We'll just keep going. Oh, no, there it is. It just needed a little bit of time. And we do need to slow down and think creatively and start doing things. So here I'm going to build a small little ad. And really what I want to do is pull in a logo. I'm going to just drag and drop because I know it creates links. Um, hmm. I'll do the colour logo for now. Now you can really see my design skills. Uh-oh. Is <laughs> she really a designer? I uh, want to format that text. Let's say I'll just use maybe body copy as the base. Uh, there we go. Now, if you've used Typekit fonts, then what will happen if the second user doesn't yet have those Typekit fonts loaded on their system, the paragraph styles will show a little red warning sign. And it basically means that you still need to install and load those fonts on your system. But you can do that through the Find Fonts dialog box in InDesign and then sync them to Typekit and then all these styles will work beautifully. So we'll do, oh, that was a character style. Not really intended to do that. Let's, I'm really stuffing this one up. So we'll put a rectangle behind the whole lot. And again, I'm going to fill that and just show you the swatches. I've started bringing some elements in. So gradually, these colors are added to your swatches panel in InDesign. The styles that you're using are added to your InDesign document as well. The, so I've got all that done. So if I add, say I want to do a big brown background color. And then I need to remember to hit the shortcut to send to back that's on the PC, not the Mac. And then I go, well, this is not really what I wanted to do. So let's swap this logo out for that one here. Right click, place linked again, much better. Let's make that the white text. Is there a white? Did I have white text? Maybe that one? Oh, that's no, not what I want to do. I'll just do body copy. Come on. I've applied a character style, so I need to go to none, otherwise it will all go horribly wrong. One of these is body copy. You know what I really need to do is just click this by list view so I can actually see the colors of my type, because I didn't know there was a body copy white. In icon view, I obviously clicked on the wrong one. Should have thought about this earlier, didn't. And we'll do that one, we'll make that white. Uh, and now, I don't like that color. We'll make that orange. Okay, so what I want to do next is, and this is totally different than the ad I created originally, I want to have a, 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 an image of some coffee beans there. 
So I'm going to jump into that coffee library that I've got full access to, I can add things, and sadly, I'm just doing a quick glance, no image of coffee beans. So one of the things you can do from within the library panel is you can search in the current library, across all libraries, or in Adobe Stock. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to type in coffee and just hope that there's at least one image of some coffee beans that comes up. No, 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 no. I bet it's the last, or it's disappeared since I last tried this. Please, be, please let that be coffee beans. I'll be in trouble with my whole demo will go. Come on, there's got to be some coffee beans in there. Oh, there's, there's some coffee beans there, but I, it, it's kind of a, oh, it would be nice if it's stretched out a bit more. So I like this image, but not enough to <coughs> download a preview and put it in my design. So what I want to do is see if stock can find similar images for me. So if I right click on this image, I can go jump into stock, see what this looks like. It's a pile of coffee beans. Not yet grinded, not yet turned into coffee. And it finds a whole bunch of other similar images. I think this is really cool. Although you can, if, if, it's, if the image is not there, you can jump to stock on the web. There's actually a link at the very bottom that will pop up. And you can, from stock on the web, also add to your libraries, your previews. So I'll go scroll through that and maybe that one there. So if I click on the button with the download icon, it will just download a preview. If I want to immediately license it, I click on the license. If you have pre-purchased a number of licenses, then it will just deduct from the number of licenses you've already got. Otherwise, you'll have to go and purchase some license. I'll just do the preview. It's now added to my library. And I'll just unclick that, drag and drop that in. I'm going to do something naughty here, and that's because there's another topic that I'll cover once we jump into Photoshop. So obviously this is a JPEG, it's a preview, it's watermarked, and it's got the, the stock ID number on it. And just because it looks prettier, I will set the blending mode to normal. Not because I have to, but I can, because it just makes the look, design look a little bit. And I would change the logos and everything to black again, because I've just changed my mind on all of this. So what I could do at this stage, uh, oops, what did I just do? Not press the shortcut on the Mac. Control zero. If I wanted to share this ad with a client, I could put it in a library and then share the link. If eventually this is a finished and approved ad with a licensed image, let, let me just show you the licensing. I'll, you'll see the images in there with the watermark and everything in there. Right click, license it. I didn't actually try this beforehand, so I'm hoping it will still work. It's, licensed. it's thinking about it. So keep an eye on whether that number is still in the lower right-hand corner, because I think that's kind of the clearest, clearer than seeing the watermark. You have zero, huh? come on. I had like 499 like two days ago. Give it a sec. Did you just tell me I had zero? I'll just buy one just to show you how it works. Come on. There we go. Continue. You got my credit card details, haven't you? I'm not going to public. If it asks me to publicly type in my credit card details, I will not do that. <laughs> so I'm going to place a secure order. Please make sure you fill in the required fields. Uh, oh, we'll take that one there. You now have the last four digits of my Visa credit card. Did you have your other account? Yeah, I'm probably in the wrong account. That's fine. 35 bucks. I'll survive. Uh, did it? Uh, yeah, I'm doing it in Windows, am I? That's why. Yeah, you're right. Thanks for reminding me of that. I've now licensed. Did it actually place it? Maybe I've just purchased it. No, I need to check something. Well, let's just assume. I'm just going to keep going. So maybe not a bad thing that it's... Um, 
let's just assume I've bought it, placed it, and what will miraculously happen I forgot that I was in Windows for a sec. Ooh, let me close this. Um, what will miraculously happen? <laughs> oh, look, it's licensed. <laughs> okay. You gotta, sometimes you've got to do these things, but it will, I promise you, if I'd done it on my other account, it would have actually worked. Um, I totally forgot that. Good stuff, because that way you can kind of see how this works. So you can send the proofs to your customer. They might go, don't like it. Can you get the larger pile or maybe change it into a coffee cup rather than a pile of beans? Then you wouldn't have had to purchase the image yet, but you could have shown them with the preview. All good. Eventually what you can do, and I won't do this right now, but once you have start building approved ads, consider that what might happen with those ads. You have an ad here, this is a particular size, and you need to start building other ads that have similar look and feel. So why not add the whole ad as an InDesign component into the library and maybe create a library called ads? Or if you happen to work for a magazine that uses a lot of, has got a lot of advertising going in, where do you store all your ads that need to go in in each edition? So consider maybe looking at pushing those into libraries and then name the libraries based on the edition number. So you can always go and find uh, the latest edition number if someone says, oh, can you pull the ad from the last edition? You have to go through your system, just pull it out of the library. And when you pull it back in from the library, if you want to make changes to it, delete the old one, put a new one in, rename the library for the next version. Okay, all done. Back to InDesign. So we've kind of gone through this whole process and I took a bit longer than I intended to, I do apologise for that. Got the coffee beans in, got the ad done, let's now have a look at what we can do with Photoshop. So I'm going to jump into Photoshop, I'm going to do a web banner in Photoshop. I've already created one earlier, but I want to go back into that library for our coffee. Uh, because if I want to use graphics from my stock library for this particular brand of licensed images, do I really want to edit the JPEG image that's in there? That's like your image that you use for different designs. And so the fact that this is a JPEG image and JPEGs don't support transparency is really a non-issue. True? We agree? Because what you'll do, you'll add other library elements to the library with where the coffee cup is transparent. If you see at the bottom here, I've already added one here, which is a macchiato cup, and that's on a transparent background. So I've kind of used the macchiato original stock image brought it into a new Photoshop document, made it transparent, and then brought it back in. So let's have a look how we do that. So I'm going to create a new Photoshop document. I've cheated. I've looked up what roughly the size is of the image, and I've created a preset already there. So if you have a lot of images that are the same and the same size, consider creating a preset in Photoshop so you can do this a bit quicker. And I'll just do RGB, whatever the settings are, click OK. I uh, mean, click create. And we'll bring in, and just because it's easier, what I'll do is there's two different things you can do. I can start out by bringing in, and I'll grab the mocha because it's quick and easy to make transparent. If I drag and drop that in, dragging and dropping creates a link. Uh, did I do something that's, I don't know what, I'll just click OK. And there it is. Place it. There is now a link to that coffee item in the library. The problem is if I start adding like a layer mask and making that transparent and eventually decide that I want to bring this layer as an item back into the library, I'm going to get an error message because it says that coffee thing already exists in the library. Now, I didn't want to do that anyway because I wanted to kind of detach from that. So I'll, de I'll delete that layer. So instead of placing a link by drag and dropping, I'm going to place a layer. And what that will do, that will embed this. And I'll just move it around, make it look pretty, and then obviously we'll use the very quick selection tool 
to very quickly select this image. So I can very quickly make that transparent. And my mouse is not moving. And I just need to make my cursor a little bit smaller. Square brackets on the keyboard to change your cursor size. And I'm trying to really slowly push this down. All right, that's a good enough. Normally, you would obviously fine tune that. I'll create a layer mask. I better switch that background off, because otherwise it won't be transparent. And if I want to be able to bring this back into my library, I can drag it in right now if I want to. But what happens when people start using this in their designs? Change. Size it up, size it down, size it up, size it down. Every time you do that as you're designing, what happens to your pixels? Yeah, a lot of resampling. So why not turn it into a smart object? And I'll rename it. So I'm going uh, mocha. And drag that, drag that into the library. And what's happened automatically on this document, it's already built a link, but I'm not going to do that, use that. I'm not going to save that, because all I use this for is just create that additional asset in my library so that now if I want to start designing my web banner, and I want to bring a transparent mocha coffee in there, I can just do that. And because it's a smart object, I can size it down, go back to it, size it back up again, go, and it will constantly draw from all of the image information in the smart object in the nested component. We'll do that. OK, so there's coffees in. Let's bring some logos in. I need to go to the other brand, because I've got some more stuff in there. Uh, the proper brand, this brand here. I've got the Make It logo in there that we obviously want to push in there. Now, again, I like turning things into smart object. Now, it's not, I've got nothing to do with being clever or anything. It's just that some people hate me for doing it when I do it in their production files. Uh, but I just, I just find it easier to know that I can still resize that a bit if I'm not happy with that without loss of quality, really. And I'll bring the logo in. What logo are we going to use? Might go for the black logo, because I can. And again, I'm not going to finish all of this. I just want to give you the idea of how this works. I grab a rectangle shape. And I'll make sure that this is set to the shape option. Click and drag. Should have made a different layer. And I'll click on one of the colors again to fill that. So you can start to see how you can start to use libraries now. We want to use Illustrator, Photoshop, and a little bit of Capture, but you can use them in other applications. Now, what's happened, if I look at my Layers panel, I've got the Make It logos in there, the Logo Blacks in there. And you might decide that at this point you decide, you know, you know what I want to do? That background colour should really be dark blue. And in that case, I should have used the white version of the logo. So we can actually swap these logos out. Now, the, the links to items are maintained both in the visual icon that you see in your layers panel when you bring things in. It kind of gets lost if I smart object it. But in this case, because it's a, a standard asset, that logo is fine, you can actually relink or update your links or relink to other things from the properties panel in Photoshop. So if you select the layer that has art on there that's sourced from a library, all I need to do is right click this. And then here is a little catch, catch you. I have to zoom out to do this. Relink to library graphic. And you go, OK. So where do I go? All right, it's just showing me the graphics now. Notice how everything else kind of disappeared. I grab the white one, and then you go, nothing's happening. <laughs> and you go, oh, hang on. There's this massively big relink button in the lower right-hand corner that I need to click on. There it is. It kind of disappears. First time I did this, I went, click. I'm just waiting, because, you know, slow internet, you're thinking something's happening. And... So just keep, keep in mind, if you're relinking assets using the relink option, that relink button is right at the very bottom of the libraries panel. So if you happen to be a graphic designer who's lucky enough to have those gigantic screens and your library goes from here to there, if you're relinking and selecting something there, just make sure that the relink button's all the way at the bottom. 
Good stuff. So I can do the same. I'll bring some text in as well. Ooh, hidden text. I'm trying not to make any typos. This is really difficult when you can't see what you're typing. Because remember, my foreground color is currently not what I want to do. So let's go for, oh, I think I did that wrong. What did I do wrong here? Let's try brown. Oh, I need to apply that first, sorry. That happens. Layer style, there we go. I typed it right, no typos. So you can, again, um, if you're used to working with paragraph styles and you're an InDesign user at heart and you then do things like this in Photoshop, in Photoshop you actually use character styles to format this. So when you're creating your character styles, keep that in mind because your character styles will also need to capture the font and the font style. So be, be aware of that. That might be something that, that catches you out at times. If you do get things that catch you out, I'll give you my email at the end of the session so you can always email me and go, it's not working, why? All right, so I've done this. I will leave the logo as it is because whenever I need that logo, I've got my Brent library. library. The Make It logo is kind of, I, I don't have that logo at all times. And I now want to add a little bit of a drop shadow behind the Make It logo. Let's do that. Make it logo, drop shadow, drop shadow, drop shadow. I'm blind because I'm in the wrong menu. There we go, drop shadow. And looks beautiful. I'm totally cool with it. You can hardly see it, but I'm so cool with it that I'm also going to, I'll drag it onto the, no, I'm not, I'll, am I holding on the right key here? Yeah. I'll drag it onto the logo. So I've now got the same drop shadow on two components. All right, all good, all great. You save that, and at some point, you have your finished product. Obviously, this is a much prettier looking one. <laughs> I do apologize. You need to bake them when you do stuff like this and pre-bake them. Okay, so I should, I should have really closed it and showed you what happens when you open a Photoshop document, because you've all seen it. You open a Photoshop document. Would you like to create a new library from this? Have you seen it? Okay. In this case, maybe I do. Maybe I want to create a lot of web banners that use particular layer styles, that use particular text formatting, that use particular logos that have been turned into smart objects. So maybe I want to create a, a library from that. And I will we'll rename that library to be maybe for web elements. So what do I need to do for that? Let me go back to the libraries panel. And you can actually see at the bottom of the libraries panel, this is kind of that dialog box that you see when you open Photoshop files up and you go, you want to create a new library from this document. Why would you do that? Well, if you do have things like web banner designs that you use as the basis for other designs where you want to pull design elements into a library, a layer style really is a design element because you choose what that needs to look like. So you're, you know, it's part of your design. So why not push those things into a library? At the same time, there's a little checkbox here that says move smart objects to library and replace with links. So if you know that you're gonna do this and create a new library from it, make sure that things like your logos are converted to smart objects because that means they all appear into the internet library that you're creating. Now it's randomly named the exact same name as the file so I'll rename that. And we'll just call that Edge Web Elements, rename. And it would actually be nice to also have the entire artwork in there. So I'll select all layers and also create that as a graphic. I don't actually think you need to select all layers, Teresa. Yes, you do. We'll just leave it as this. So this is the espresso yourself and, or web banner, whatever you want to call it. So it's in that library as well. Good stuff. Jumping back very quickly to InDesign. So where are we at? We're almost at the end of this session, by the way. So we've started out by capturing a design idea for a new brand development. So we've, we've 
captured colors, we've captured a sketch that we've done, and we've used that as the basis to eventually get our logos all done, get our corporate colors all done. We then started working on a brand guide that is something that you'll send to your client and maybe send to other customers, and it'd be really nice to pull things out of that brand guide into a library so that you have a brand library as a basis for your future design. So think of things that you would normally put in a brand guide, the fonts that you use, the logos that you use, Obviously, the details on, you need to have 25% white space around your logo. That's stuff that you still write up in your brand guide. But the logo components and, and, the, and the font components, the color components, they can all go into your brand library that you share for building any further products for that particular brand. Um, you can then start building things like ads and graphic design elements. Again, those ads could end up in a library that you reuse. It really depends on where ads sit in your workflow if you are you specialize in creating display ads for lots of different customers. It might be different scenario to when having, when working for um, a small business and doing their business mag magazine quarterly and having ads in the business magazine that kind of pay for the print jobs or whatever. So think about how you could use that. And then eventually we jumped into Photoshop just to look at some other elements that we could bring into libraries like the smart objects, the layer styles, and also how you can use a stock art library with licensed images as the basis. It's just, you know, you need another coffee image, let's go and have a look at what we've already licensed for that client. Pull it out. Do I need a version that's transparent? Bring it into Photoshop, add a layer mask, turn it into a smart object, drag it back into the library, and it is the transparent version of that object. So you can reuse that throughout your projects. And it kind of is like a finished version at that stage. Um, even if you do like a very rough uh, transparency creation, I was going to say deep edge, but I always fear that I might be the only person in the room to still know what that is. Um, so let's say if, if I've got that trans, I can do a very rough one, put it in my design, get the design approved, and then go back and double click on that element and, and further perfect that. Double click on the smart object, fix it up. Okay, so now let's have a look at the final two little components that I wanted to show you, that is the animate. So I've done a little animation here of this logo and I am by no means an edge animate user. But I managed to do this, so I was kind of proud of myself. I'll tell you what I did. I started out by going to my brand library, because obviously that's where all my brand stuff was, and that's where their logo was. So I pulled that logo into Animate from the library, and then I kind of dissected it and turned it into three different symbols so that I could have the coffee cup and the, and the, and the type at the bottom, and then the two smoke elements as symbols that I could animate, and I put them into three different layers. So there they are. All Beautiful, and that's kind of all you see. And I build on HTML animation. So if you start a new project in Animate, if you're not used Animate, HTML5 Canvas, that's really, I reckon, the way to go because it will work on all devices. And it will work in Sandy's animations as well that she creates. There's a session at three, four o'clock? Three, day. next session, building animated projects from InDesign. Okay, so all I want to do here is really Take this entire animation and pull that into a library. I'll go to the web elements library because that's kind of where I am. And notice if I click on the plus here, I can, I can add a finished HTML5 an animation into my library. That's kind of cool. Because you might want to pull that into a website. You might want to give it to someone else to put in their website. That means we're now, oh, sorry, this was the animate section of the session. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got to go to Muse now. Every Muse. I've kind of done a very, very quick dummy website. Um, so you can see it's really not finished um, because it takes a lot of time to put these files together. But the first thing that I want to do is go to the home page. And in this spot here, I want to put the animation in. So let's go to the, so we're now in Muse. How cool is that? And again, a library for web elements, why not? If you design them specifically for web elements, name them for web elements. Uh, let me go find my animation, there it is. So can I just drag and drop that, would that work? 
Oh, that works. Now, I can't preview it in Muse. So what I have to do, if I want to show you what it looks like, I have to preview this page in the browser. The internet might be so fast that the animation's finished by the time it's up. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, cool. She did it in, love that. Good stuff, right? I should have left this one for last, because it got applause. <laughs> Now, it, it's just so easy to do it. So let's say that wet banner will put that on the contact, contact page. Hey, that was a Photoshop file that I pushed into a library. I'm now bringing that Photoshop file straight into, I might need to size that. Uh, when, when you size things in Muse, stay away from the shift key. It's like you need to kind of put that arm behind your back if you've used Muse, you will know what I'm talking about, because every other Adobe application, you need to hold down the shift key to proportionally size. And you know, I might pull, the, pull this page down a bit just to get the little, little white space there. That means that if I want to start making changes in this, double click on that, go back to Photoshop, make changes to your colors, and the asset in, asset is the equivalent of the links panel in Adobe InDesign and Illustrator it will then update the link as well. It's kind of cool, isn't it? Because you might have one person specializing in web design and another doing Photoshop stuff. So that's cool, because that person, that, could, that, that web banner might not be finalized. You can already put it in your web design, and all they need to do is just double click on that one in the library, at, update it, and it will update in here as well. Okay, a couple of little other little things. So we'll go back to uh, I want to bring the transparent cup in. I can use that in here as well. So the same, going back to the coffee library. And notice here there's a libraries panel and a CC libraries panel. So I have to go back to my coffee. I, I know this coffee's coming at 3 o'clock, so I'm getting a bit excited. Uh, and we'll grab the mock up transparent. We'll pull that in here. And again, Photoshop file, make transparent straight out of the library. Pull it in. Drop it in. Good stuff. And then I'm looking at this, so I'm still looking at the web design, and I'm going, yep, yeah, nice. But this sub pages, these are all the different coffees, and I want to have like a bit of a background image there. So I've actually applied a B master master page to the product pages or the different coffee type pages. And I've just put this on the macchiato page. It was actually a mocha, but that's okay. So I'm going to go to the B master here. And if, you, if you're an InDesign user who's never used Muse, think of masters very similar to what you would do in InDesign. So any core design element that you would put on a master page in InDesign, like your headers, your footers, background colors, and backdrops, you would put them on the master page so, so that you don't have to add those elements to every page of your InDesign document. In Muse, it's very similar. You don't want to have to add a background image if it needs to be the same, or a header or a footer to every web page that you create. So in this case, I'm going to get, go back to my coffee library, and I want to show you something else that you can do with these images. If I right click on an image, I can place it linked, I can place a copy. So that's kind of the same difference that you have in InDesign. But you can also set it as a browser fill or a page fill. So that will fill all of the web page. I can then go into my fill uh, drop down here and control whether I want that to scale to fill so that it uses most of the picture to fill the page that you see and also which part it needs to resize from. So I want it to always be aligned from and resized from the lower right hand corner of the page. And whatever happens to the size of the page, that image will always fill and it will always use that point of origin. So we've got to go to the website now, and you'll see that automatically goes across to all of those pages here. It's an unlicensed image at the moment, because what I see, if I look very carefully, is the stock icon on there. So let me, now that I'm in the right library, show you that I can license this image. See? 485. <laughs> that was the proper account to use. And then what should happen? Come on, we can do it. It's 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 doing just it's doing things there. 
So give it a second. Hopefully we can, lock, we can see the word stock disappear on screen. So at least I've shown you that it works. <laughs> Come on fast, internet in Sydney, hurry up. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. How far was it? Obviously it's bringing down all of the image. 7,360 7, pixels by 4,912. Oh, come on. I don't think we want to wait, do we? It says it's licensed. Let me check. Let me just zoom in, zoom out. Oh, this hasn't updated. It's not good. Well, let's right click and update the asset. Adobe stock, go away. It's magic. It worked. Good stuff. So that's kind of coming to the end of the session. So we've gone through basically this entire workflow where we see these CC libraries pop up everywhere. Uh, but in reality, if you think about CC libraries, try and think them as the hub from which you design your different components. Whether it starts from the point of early creation of your design ideas, to building your brand, to building ads, to building web banners, to building websites, animation, Premiere Pro videos that you might again use then in turn in different design components. Start to think of your creative cloud libraries as that core, that heart around which you can build absolutely everything.